I primarily market myself as a corporate DP, but there is a plethora of variety of jobs. So no job is the same, therefore I have to charge differently. Now I do have a baseline structure of a full day rate, and if I have to travel, I add in the IRS mileage rate. But there are other jobs where the scope is so much smaller that I need to lower it a little bit. For this one, um, we'll be charging a half day rate, which is actually 50% of my full day rate. Normally a half day rate is closer to 70%. And I'm doing that because I'm gonna make money on the back end through social media edits. So I'll have a per unit price for each social media video. And then that way I'll be able to recoup a lot of the costs that I missed by lowering my half day rate. I think I might put a unedited raw video up showing exactly how I set up my camera once on site. No cuts, just a complete raw view of everything from start to finish. If you guys are interested in that, let me know. And uh, potentially I could do it on an upcoming shoot. So I did bring the 150 to 600. I use it maybe twice a year. Um, I just brought it as a backup. I don't think I want to be using it this time. Uh, 24 to 70 Sigma EF version as always. So I'm here at 1 p.m. My speaker that I'm filming goes on at 2.15. So I have an hour and 15 minutes to set up and get ready. I do need to talk to the AV guy who should be in that corner and I'm gonna see if I can get an XLR feed out. And if not, then I'm gonna put a Rode lavalier on the speaker and hopefully the frequencies don't get mixed up since they will have wireless handheld mics. So the 70 mil end of the 24 to 70 isn't tight enough for this room. So it's a good thing that I brought this extremely big, heavy telephoto lens. And it is so heavy that I'm actually gonna try to put on a little bit of lens support that screws into the Manfrotto plate. I wish I had rails for something this long and heavy. I don't, so this is just gonna have to work in a pinch. Here is where the shoe gets flipped upside down. So I have 45 minutes until my speaker goes on stage. They are doing a panel before him, and then the host comes over and says, hey, why don't you just join us now? So I go from 45 minutes to about 10 seconds to get a mic onto him. Luckily, I had the mics ready to go. They were already connected. I did an audio test, battery levels were good, and I just clipped it to his jacket and sent him on his way. But that is just something that you can't prepare for. A 45 minute schedule change is, is really big. And also the audio video guy never came. So that was really our only option. Um, battery is at 54%. I don't think I'll have to switch that while I'm here. But man, what a, what a change up that you, <laughs> you have to adapt to. So the rig looks crazy big, but most importantly, audio is going good. So like I said, the Rode Lavalier is on the left channel. And then on the right, I do have a shotgun mic just picking up ambient sound as redundancy in case something happens. I do want to get some B-roll, so when my speaker isn't talking, I'm shifting the camera over to the side of the room, grabbing some crowd reactions, and getting what I can. You never know what you need B-roll for, so if you have a locked off shot, um, this is when it would be nice to have an FX3 that I could just move around, but I don't right now, and I didn't want to mix in any Canon footage, so I just moved the tripod when I could. Here's a weirdly specific thing I like, the soft button press of the FX6's record button. So a lot of times uh, when you have long telephoto lenses, any contact with the camera is emphasized in the image. And there's a lot of cameras that I've worked with that have uh, a lot of tension in the record button, which causes movement. Even if you're handheld and, and not on a long focal length, it can be shown in the image. So th it's a feature that I don't think anybody has mentioned. I've never even thought of it until I started using this one. And it makes a huge difference, especially, like I said, for longer focal lengths. So how did I get this job? About six months ago, I found a listing for a production company who was coming to Florida and they were gonna film this guy's company. 
and they hired me. So six months goes by, and that speaker goes directly to me and bypasses the production company. Now, that is a red flag if you're a contractor. You never want to skip the person who hired you on the first job and work directly with their client on the second job. It's poor taste, and you will burn a lot of bridges. So I contacted the production company that hired me, let them know what was happening, said, I want to go through the correct hiring procedures so let me know how to proceed. And they said, it's all good. Um, feel free to continue working with them. So I assumed their, their contract finished and it's of no importance to them. So that's how I got onto this one. They reached out to me directly and I was very happy to do it. It was very small scope, a few hours on site. I think in total, I was here for two hours, maybe two and a half. And that's it. And that is a wrap for this shoot. I got everything I needed, stayed around for a little bit more B-roll. And I love this Sony FX6 rig. It is doing everything that I want and without problems. There's a lot of things that have good specs, but the ergonomics is horrible. And this is just amazing. I love it. Having one ba battery for the camera and monitor means I don't have to bring a bunch of LPE6 batteries and their respective chargers. I can just have one power system to take care of everything. And with the 24 to 70, it gets me through, I would say, 85% of my jobs. Of course, in this case, I did need to bring out this big boy that I use maybe twice a year. And uh, I think once I get a smaller Sony, um, debating selling the C70 for it, I'm going to grab a 70 to 200, so I'll have 24 to 70, 70 to 200, two lenses, you know, minus this one because it rarely gets used, for everything. And that way, my two camera interviews, A camera will have 24 to 70, B camera will have 70 to 200, and that'll just lighten up the bag, keep everything easy, and make everything fast and efficient, which is my main uh, modus operandi. Just keep it easy. And if you have some ideas about freelancing, just a reminder, I do offer consultation calls. Pricing and details are in the description. Most people usually ask about what is the correct gear for this type of job or how do I market myself? How do I niche down? Anything like that about freelancing or contracting, I'm happy to share my insight. I do it on these videos, but more than happy to schedule a call and go more in depth.